Good morning, crafty friends, and welcome to Tea Time. It's Tuesday. How's everybody doing today? Let me know you're out there watching. I would love to hear from you today. I am super excited to share with you, so I'm glad you're here watching. Let me say hi to a few people, a few of our regulars, and if you're not a regular, then welcome for maybe the first time. I'm glad you're here watching, and uh, this is something we do every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 o'clock Central Time. You can tune into the Tailored Expressions uh, videos either on Facebook or on YouTube. We are live streaming to both and typically on Tuesdays I go through all of the new release products and then we get a little crafty time together. So we're gonna do that here today. Of course I talk about our special offers for the week and on Thursdays you get to hear from either Heather Nichols or Susan Block and typically they walk you through a fun project either featuring the week's new releases or something else that has inspired them. Uh, we're always trying to come up with new techniques and even making old techniques new again because all of those things we sometimes just need reminders on, oh yeah, I can do that. I remember I did that years ago and it was fun. And so just kind of encouraging you along your crafty journey to try new things and get crafty with the goodies that you have. So let's say hi. Hello, Kathy. Yes, happy release day to everyone. Hi Beth out in California, Deb's here from Illinois, Farley out in Sacramento, awesome. Hello Paula, Deneen's here, in, cloudy in Kansas today. It's getting chillier around here, isn't it? It's been a little odd without any snow around here, but I don't, I'm not wishing for snow. I, you will know this about me, uh, that I never wish for snow. I'm perpetually cold, always cold. Even in the summer, you'll find me with my heater typically running at my desk, um, keeping my feet warm at least. But I, I guess Whitney and I both got that from our mom. We're always cold. So I never wish for snow, but I do want it to feel a little bit more like Christmas. And I'm going to admit that I think a little bit of snow might help make it feel a little more like Christmas. So who's ready for Christmas? I can't believe it's only 13 days away. It's the 12th today, right? Crazy, it is upon us, and I really only have one more weekend to go do all the shopping things. And as my children get older, it's getting harder to hide all of the things from them. So, so yes, that's what this weekend is for. I just wait until the last minute so that they don't find it before I have a chance to wrap it. <laughs> Hello, Pam, out in New Jersey. Anna, you're cold out in California today. Hi, Mindy, still working on Christmas stuff for you. Oh, good, Lisa, it's your first live today. That's great. Uh, Pam's asking, is today the day we should expect the glass boards to ship? So our large magnetic glass board, if you pre-ordered the 18 by 24 uh, back in November, then those have started shipping. And I know some people have already gotten theirs because I've seen pictures on Facebook, on the fan page, showing your setup with your new glass board, adorning your desktop, and I love seeing those. So as you guys get your, um, if you get your glass board, I encourage you to take a picture and show us your space. Maybe that'll give you the excuse or the little push you need to get things cleaned up, at least enough to take a little picture of your desktop. So. Yes, those are going out and they are big and heavy. And so I know our team isn't working through them as quickly as uh, maybe normal orders would be, but you should be getting shipping notices of those or at least an update on the status of your previously placed pre-order. If you go into your account, it might say on hold or it will turn to shipped once it has shipped. So um, yeah, you guys should be seeing those soon. Pretty exciting. Donna says her magnetic glass board arrives tomorrow. Awesome. Sally, you've got your cards sent. Your gifts are bought and wrapped. Someday, I want to grow up to be just like Sally, <laughs> where my things are done ahead of time and I can take a little breather and enjoy the holiday season. So every year I tell myself, this is the year that I'm going to do it. All the things are going to be done ahead of time and we're going to relax, but somehow that never turns to reality. It's just, I think, the season of life that I'm in with young kids and, and a business and lots of things going on. So someday I will get there. Maybe I just need to be a better planner. And then 
Um, that's what Sally probably has on me. <laughs> Better planning. All right. Hello, Kat. Good, good. Good to see you, Lisa. Lynn is here. Oh, Lynn's switching to Valentine's. That's great. We at Tailored Expressions, if this is kind of your first um, year with Tailored Expressions, maybe you discovered us earlier this year at some point in time, you will come to know that our Valentine's release waits until after Christmas. So we will not be re releasing our Valentine's until January. Right away in January on the 2nd this year is a Tuesday. And so we're going to be uh, bringing you Valentine goodies and we will have lots of fun new stuff. But just in case you're wondering when the Valentine release is coming, that typically comes in January from us. So excited to share all of those goodies with you. But first, should we talk about today's new release? Have you seen it yet? Have you placed your order? Hopefully you are getting inspired. Uh, this is one of those times of year when you know, we're all, we're not quite at Valentine's Day yet. We're not quite ready to shift the brain over to uh, that holiday because we're all kind of in Christmas mode, but we're sort of wrapping up our Christmas projects. And so we aren't releasing new products for creating Christmas themed items because hopefully you guys are already doing that with the things that we released months past. So when we decided and talked about what we wanted to do for this week's release, we decided to bring back a popular uh, theme that we haven't done for several years. We, if you've been around Tailored Expressions for many years, then you will recognize the term Petita Palooza. So that is something that we kind of coined several years ago. And a petite stamp and die combo for us is a smaller size set that comes with the coordinating dies. And in the past, it kind of allowed us an opportunity to explore lots of different themes and occasions and just artwork that doesn't typically fit into our normal holiday and occasion-based releases. So we decided it was high time to bring back Petita Palooza. Since we don't call these petite sets anymore, we decided to rename this as Perfect Pairings. So that's what you are seeing on the Tailored Expressions new release today. They're called Perfect Pairings because they have a small stamp set, a little bit of stamp, and a little bit of die. So you get the perfect pair. And all of these different uh, themes that we were able to explore, we have cats and dogs, we have Gus and Gertie, we have flowers, we have a corgi. So there is just something for everyone. And also it's something that extends in your collection throughout the coming year. So it's not just something you can use for Christmas or Valentine's Day. It's something that you can use to make a card at any time for any reason. So I'm excited to share with you the 12 new perfect pairings that we just added today. So let's go ahead and take a look at our special offer for this release. So as I mentioned, we have new stamp and die combos. There are 12 of them. And our promotion this week is 15% off those stamp and die combos when you buy four or more through December 17th. So the four or more have to be from the new uh, stamp and die combos, the new 12, and the 15% off is only off of the stamp and die combos, not off of your entire order. So hopefully that makes sense, but when you purchase four or more of our new stamp and die combos, you will get 15% off all of the stamp and die combos that you purchase. Hope that makes sense for everybody. And in addition, we also have special double points uh, launched today for our insiders, super fans, and rainbow royalty. So if you are in one of those loyalty tiers, then you are getting double points on all of your purchases starting today and going through Thursday. So this is a perfect time of year to kind of check your loyalty tier status. And if you're close to the next tier, you're gonna wanna try to bump up before the end of the year because it does run on a calendar year system and your points do start over in January. You get to retain whatever tier you're currently at, but in order to get to the next tier, you have until the end of December. So um, I, I know I see lots of questions coming up about uh, points and such. And if you have specific questions, you can, of course, email our customer service or maybe somebody on here can help you with specific questions. So I won't be going through all of those today, but we do have a um, page on our website that explains our loyalty tiers. 
So if you're new and you haven't heard of our loyalty program, then you'll want to check that out. Anytime you make a purchase, you earn points. Your points get you uh, money back on future orders, and they also uh, kind of help you climb the ladder up the loyalty tier status, and that earns you special events like these double points and um, other things that we have, other perks we have for the different levels of our uh, loyalty tiers. So you can check that out on the website. I believe it's under connect with us and then you can search or look for crafty points or loyalty tiers. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but something along those lines. All right, you guys, thank goodness for points, Mindy says, yes. All right, well, let's take a look at Every little bit helps, right? And we love to give back. So when you support Tailored Expressions and invest in supplies from us, then you earn points to use on future things. And there's always something new coming, right? All right, so here are some of the beautiful samples that the design team has created. And I'm going to go ahead and start my sorting here so I can show you all of the pretty stuff that we have coming out today. Pretty and fun and cute. I don't have, I don't think I have a sample of every product from this release, unfortunately, but I know we do on our website and our design team members have, um, oh, maybe I lied. I do. I have a sample. Oh, I'm missing one. I have a sample for all but one of the uh, stamp and die combos. So let's start with a fan favorite. Everybody loves a good Gus and Gertie stamp, right? So this is Gus and Gertie Get Crafty and uh, they are doing just that together. Gus is sitting in the chair working with paper and Gertie is helping with a little bit of ribbon and they've got markers and scissors and um, as any good crafter does, they've got lots of paper scraps down on the floor as well. Some fun sentiments in this one, to bling or not to bling, handmade hello, crafty friends are the best, and I can't, I'm stamping. <laughs> the excuse we all give when we don't want to go to something. I can't, I'm stamping. So like I said before, these are red rubber stamps and there are dies in each package. So you have in this one, the die that cuts out Gus and Gertie. And then you have the four sentiments that come along with that in the rubber. So there's Gus and Gertie get crafty in this cute little sample from Jill Hawkins. I love how she did these lines in the background, just using her score pal, kind of create interest back there to give her white on white texture, a little something to make it pop. I love it. All right, next up, we're gonna continue with cute critters. We have this adorable set with a corgi. So all of you corgi lovers, I wanna hear from you. Do you have a corgi or do you just love corgis? I know all of you that don't have a corgi are gonna be advocating for a stamp of your dog type. So feel free to put that in the comments as well if you love a particular dog um, breed. I would love to hear what your favorite is or what you own. And this is Hell or Hey Gorgeous. Instead of gorgeous, it's gorgeous. And we have sending positive vibes on this card from Susan. This cute little corgi's on the skateboard. And I love how she used that brick stencil to kind of create the um, scene inside the little circle with some of the clay hearts and our. Um, our paw prints stencil in the background. We've got chocolate lab, Yorkies. <laughs> That's awesome. A dachshund. Yes, my sister's got a doxy and so does my my mom. So we we love dachshunds in our family too. Okay, so we are going to continue with dogs and this is rough day. So we've got a cute, sweet little dog here kind of looking off into the distance. And then we have this poor little guy that has to wear a cone. I know that um, 
cones can be kind of funny. They are so helpful for dogs, but they do kind of make you giggle, especially if anybody's ever seen a cat in a cone or had to put a cone on their cat, they just, they don't like it at all. So this appropriate sentiment, or this sentiment in the set is very appropriate. Feeling rough, at least you don't have to wear a cone. Get well soon. So Jill did her signature Jill style again with the white on white on white. She embossed the texture onto this uh, second layer of white to make it set apart from the card base and the image layer. We've got a little bit of splatter, just a little bit of perfect perfection on that splatter, Jill. It sort of is like she intended to just do it right around here and colored up those images really simply. They are sitting on a bed of stitches here at the bottom with her uh, sewing machine. She kind of grounded those two little critters with um, some stitching there. So super cute. The two dies included in this set are the dies that cut out the two dog images. All right, next up we have more critters. I'm just gonna go ahead with all the critters and this is the one set that I don't have a sample for but I know we have several samples on the website. This is Forever and Ever and this is our sweet little kitties set. I love this guy holding the heart here. I have a plan for him for Valentine's Day with some of the things that are coming out with that release that it will be just perfect for. Perfect. Huh, I wasn't even intending that, but now I'm going to tell you that the pun was intended. Uh, we've got a few sentiments. Missing you, love you forever, and happy birthday to you with those three little cats. And the dies in this set cut out the cat images. So there's three dies to go along with this combo. All right, next up, another critter. Let's talk about... Duck Duck Goose. This is the Duck Duck Goose stamp and die combo. The two dies in this set cut out the images of the geese. Now I know we maybe have some nature lovers here that are going to say that this looks like a duck or, um, or a goose. You know, I did some research and geese have longer necks than ducks. So I kind of thought we were going with the goose idea here. He's got a pretty long neck. Um, but you know, it's a cartoon image. So if you like it to be a duck or you want it to be a goose, the set is called Duck Duck Goose and it can go either way. Susan made this super cute card. You can see she stamped the goose in the background tone on tone and then she added three across here like they're kind of running, sending a gaggle of good wishes. I think that's super cute. And I love the sweet imagery here with the two geese kind of wrapped um, neck and neck and the happy anniversary to my one and only and then another one says a silly goose told me it's your birthday So love that one with the two dies to cut out the geese images We're going to continue going with critters here and this is going to be a Welcome edition for many of you. This is called return of the floaties if you have been around Tailored Expressions, then maybe you remember these guys. Originally, they were called floaties, and we retired this stamp set apparently much too early for all of you because we have heard from so many people, we want the floaties back. So we brought them back, the exact same artwork in the exact same size in a different stamp set. So in the original stamp set, there were four different floaties. Uh, but we wanted it to fit in this smaller stamp and die combo size. So this set includes three of the floaty images and then dies to coordinate with those different images. So if you have our previously released floaties, you don't need to buy this. It is exactly the same size um, as the previous one. I know there was some confusion on the Facebook fan page this weekend with the sneak peek that went up. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that it is exactly the same as the previously released artwork. So there are three sentiments in this one. It's your day, you make me smile, and go with the float. And you can see Lori created this super cute card. Look at that cool pool background in the, the or stencil that she used in the background. It's a rotating stencil, so if you look really closely, I'm not sure you'll catch it on the screen, 
but I can see how she blended once and then rotated her stencil and blended a slightly darker version to make it look like that pool water in the background. I love it. So there's Return of the Floaties. Now let's talk about one more cutesy set. This fun little addition to our collection called Rise and Shine. So this one has three dies in it to cut out the three images in this set along with some fun sentiments, you and me meant to be and a toast to you. So we've got our toaster with a little piece of toast popping out and uh, pancakes, a stack of pancakes, and then we have coffee and a donut. Jill created this cute little set of mini slim cards. She's got the um, score lines in the background just to add interest there with some pretty uh, blending on these little squares and googly eyes. You can googly eye that toaster to your heart's content. I think it will be so, so cute with googly eyes on it. So that is Rise and Shine. Uh, Valerie was asking what stencil is for the water. That one is called Cool Pool Rotating Stencil. All right, we're gonna go in a little bit prettier direction now with some of our new stamps. This one is called Magical Moths Stamp and Die Combo. I have seen moths everywhere and Susan has been asking for moths for a while. She, um, her two daughters love moths and they're always looking for pretty um, artwork on notebooks and it really seems to be everywhere these days. So we decided to come out with this Magical Moths set and they could be um, kind of extended to butterflies, but really this is, I forget, I think this is called a lunar moth, or maybe I'm getting that wrong, but there's a specific kind of moth that has this long tail on it. And then we have the more traditional looking moth here. There are just some general sentiments in here, thinking of you, just a note, and make today magical. So that one includes two dies. The two um, images can be cut out with the dies included in that set. Isn't this adorable? This beautiful card from Heather. Now I know you might not be able to see this in the background, but if I hold this up to the light, you might be able to see how she crinkled her cardstock. So I'm guessing she uh, stamped it and splattered it and then potentially spritzed it with a little bit of water first and then crumpled it and then kind of um, flattened it back out again, and it just has so much beautiful texture. We've got the torn edge at the bottom here. I love that. That's something that we used to do more often, and I can't say I've seen that on cards a lot recently. So I loved seeing that from Heather, how she brought back that technique of kind of crumpling your paper. Yes, the Luna Moth. Okay, thank you, Candy. Yes, this is a Luna Moth. I had it kind of right. I think I said Lunar but um, Luna is the correct word. All right, next up, let's talk about this one. So this one is called T for Two, and this is actually the card we're gonna be making today. I created this mini slim using dies from the set. So with some of our stamp and die combos, it might not be apparent exactly what you're making with this just by looking at the stamps on the front. So on the front, we have a couple of pattern stamps, we have several sentiments. May your cup runneth over with joy, love, and laughter. No one stacks up to you. Your tea rific. You're my cup of tea. So you can guess that the dyes included in this might help you make some teacups. So if I turn this over on the back, you can see we have our teacups. They ha there are two teacups and two handles. The handles face in two opposite directions. And we also have two of the saucers if you want a little saucer at the bottom. And there's a small heart and then there's a tea bag. Um, it is just a hexagon shape, but it kind of resembles a tea bag with a little heart cut in the middle. So that is tea for two and you can really just cut and create teacups, hot cocoa mugs, coffee mugs. It really doesn't have to just be a tea. Cup, but the sentiments in this set really are designed um, for tea. I'm gonna pull in a different sentiment set here. It's one that I haven't used for a little while and I thought it was perfect to go with these teacups. So we'll do this in just a little bit here. 
Now the last, that was nine if you've been counting. So I have three more left to show you. And these last three, these were actually released at our Stamp Joy in-person event. So if you came to Des Moines this fall and saw us at Stamp Joy, you got an early release of these last three and we're now bringing them out for everyone. So if you were at Stamp Joy in person this fall, then check your collection for these before you um, accidentally repurchase. But the last three are called, they're part of our Meadow collection. And this is Meadow Sink Foil, which is a, Sink Foil is a wildflower that looks like, like this drawing, this illustration here. We've got a sentiment included in this one, happy birthday, and then the die is uh, the one that cuts out the image here. So that is Meadow Sink Foil, and let me show you a couple of cards. These are both by Lori Craig. I love this gorgeous yellow, this buttery um, yellow flower that she created. It looks really nice with that sympathy sentiment. And then here, if you're not into coloring, do it in black and white and it looks absolutely gorgeous. She just repeated the stamping of that imagery in the background and kind of called it out with a black layer um, in the background and this beautiful signature thanks die cut over vellum. If I pull it up closer, you can see that she layered that black die cut onto vellum, which just softens it and kind of sets it apart from that background. So absolutely gorgeous with the, the meadow sink foil, Lori. That's so pretty. Now let's talk about our next meadow. This is meadow aster. Aster is another wildflower. And this one has the die to cut out the floral image and then two sentiments, get well soon and thanks on that one. And we've got these two pretty samples. This one on the left here is from Susan using the arch stacklet to create a kind of a focal frame for that flower image. I love it when Susan does, she calls it a cheater method for coloring because uh, Susan's probably told you she's not super into coloring, um, but she loves to do this method. If I pull it up, you can see that she just does a series of flicking with a couple different colors of markers so that you don't have the pressure of filling in the entire flower and blending it and um, doing all of that work. So this is kind of Susan's coloring method that she loves, but take a look at Heather's over here on the right. Again, these yellow flowers just pop and Heather used that honey background to kind of draw in the rustic appearance. And then we've got the uh, toffee cardstock, of course, with our diamonds piercing plate. Hopefully you can see that in the background there. The diamonds piercing really adds so much. So I love both of those. Perfect little thank you cards. That was Meadow Aster. And now somehow I ended up with, this must have been everybody's favorite meadow because I have four samples with this one. This one is called Meadow Grass. And the sentiments in this one are miss you and hello there. And it has that die to cut out the grass image. So Lori did this adorable kind of terrarium um, and it is a shaped card. It uses our snow globe builder uh, die set with our arch stacklets. And she used this really gorgeous meadow grass here with the little deer. I think it's so cute, very clever a little miss you inside. I think that's so fun, Lori. Now this one compared to a typical A2 card is quite a bit smaller, just to give you a size reference on that. So here's another one from Lori. I love it. Lori and Jill both do this a lot. The color uh, layered over the same color. So in this case, Lori has the saltwater taffy. She's got a card base. She has a petite scallop layer. Then she has another plain cut layer on top of a pierced layer. So all of those different textures and heights really add to the dimension on this project without adding a lot of busyness with multiple colors. You can see she colored the beautiful grass with some greens. This looks like it might be pencil coloring. I'm guessing Lori colored with colored pencils because these flickings look quite a bit um, more, uh, fine than you can get with a marker. So I think this is absolutely gorgeous. 
Next up, we have this one from Susan, and she used it, uh, used this stamp kind of cleverly by stamping it all over the background, tone on tone. And then we've got lots of splatters to add interest to the background and then embossed. Again, Susan isn't big on coloring images, so she took the image and uh, embossed it with white embossing powder onto the spearmint cardstock and just added a few little uh, tone on tone flicks with marker to give that image a little bit of dimension. And then last but certainly not least, this gorgeous card from Heather. I love it. I love how she kind of intertwined those meadow grass images with the frame and the colors are just fantastically Heather. This is toffee cardstock with um, sour gummy and then we've got of course the sugar cube and the way that she colored these branches it's kind of a um, mustard yellow I want to say color that she chose for those and I think it is just beautiful. A few little clear drip drops add some interest of course, she splattered the images after she colored them. And I wish you guys were all here with me so you could see these details in person. But again, if you're looking for um, close-ups of the projects or even what the designers used, you can always head to their blogs. And if you're looking for how to get to their blogs, you can head to the Tailored Expressions blog, which is on the homepage of our website. You can just click blog and then we have all of the designers linked in a blog post today so that you can head to their individual blogs and see these gorgeous creations. All right, what do you think? What was your favorite? We had 12 of them. So if you can't pick one favorite, pick two favorites. <laughs> what is speaking to you? What do you see yourself using as you create? All right, so we are going to, as I said, we're gonna make this teacup card. And these can be teacups, they can be coffee cups, they can be hot cocoa cups. So lots of options for this. And when I was creating, I wanted to take this, of course, probably not a surprise, but I wanted to take it in a rainbow direction. But I wasn't thinking teacups as like bright rainbow colors. So I picked a, kind of a non-traditional rainbow to do this card in. Um, and let me share that with you. So we have raspberry sorbet. And then next up is pumpkin. Then we have honey, sweet basil, sour gummy, and last but not least, or maybe least, we have huckleberry. So that is a, a fun combo when you want rainbow, but you don't want bold rainbow, you want muted rainbow. So that is, <laughs> Paula said she's ordering all 12. So there's her favorite, all of them. Gus and Gertie and floaties is what Pam said. The meadow sets and the tea said Susan. Mindy likes the moths and the tea. Isis, you like the all the critters, rough day, Gus and Gertie, the meadow leaf and the tea. Awesome, lots of tea drinkers out there or maybe you're just seeing all the versatility with this uh, particular set that those cups don't have to just be for tea. So we're gonna start by taking the cups and I pre-cut those so that you guys um, so that you don't have to watch me cut cups <laughs> instead you can watch me stamp cups so in this particular stamp set we have these two pattern pieces uh, one of them creates kind of a uh, striped diamonds I guess you could call them and then the other one is a polka dot pattern. So I'm just going to take and do tone on tone stamping on all of these cups to add a little bit of interest to the designs. Now you could add hearts if you wanted. You could even emboss the designs on the cups, uh, but I'm going to do just tone on tone with each of these ink colors. So I'll start with the raspberry sorbet. And I kind of want my uh, design to look like the polka dots are more concentrated at the bottom of the cup, so they're kind of falling down. 
So you could do this as a stripe of polka dots if you moved it up and stamped it through the middle more. But I am just going to add this kind of down towards the bottom of my cup, just like that. I'm going to move you guys in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing here. So there's raspberry sorbet. Then we're going to move to pumpkin. Let me get my baby wipe out here to keep my surface and my stamp clean enough to keep moving. So pumpkin's up next, and I'm going to do polka dots again on that one. I am going to vary these, doing some in polka dots and some with, with diamonds. All right, we'll move orange out of the way. Let's move to green. This is going to be my last. I'm doing three with polka dots and three with the diamond pattern. So we'll do the sweet basil next. All right. Done with those polka dots, and I'll get those back on the panel here. And then we'll move on to our diamonds in another color. Now the polka dots, as I said, were intentionally designed not to cover the entire cup. If you wanted to cover the entire cup, you would simply stamp it, move it up and stamp it again across the top. But this pattern, the diamonds, were uh, created to cover the entire cup. So if I grab one of these, we're just gonna put it over the top so you can see that it does cover the entire piece. Now, if you wanted it to not cover the entire piece, you could just, you know, stamp it down at the bottom or stamp it at the top, however you, however you wanna do the patterning. And if you want more pattern options than just what's in here, then we've got some stencils that you could use or other things that you could Grab from your collection to pattern these cups in different ways. So that was honey ink that I'm going to stamp over the top of this. If you're mass producing with this, you could even set it up in your Misty so that you can pop each one of these cups down and then just make sure that the pattern gets fully stamped onto your cup each time. This is Sour Gummy. It's coming together. I had this thought I should have explored this, but I'm a big hot cocoa drinker. I don't, honestly, I don't drink coffee and I don't drink tea either. So um, hot cocoa is kind of my hot drink of choice. And I was thinking, I, I haven't determined yet what dye I would use, but I wanna make little marshmallows coming out of the top of this cup. So I've gotta search through what we have that might, um, might look like a tiny little marshmallow, maybe a, Maybe something from one of our gnome sets that would be that shape. I'm not sure, it hasn't come to me yet, but we've gotta have something, right? After 15 years in business, there's gotta be a dye somewhere that looks like, somewhere in our collection that looks like marshmallows. Okay, I'm gonna just quickly get this clean enough to put back on the I do like hot apple cider. Yes, candy, that would be another good thing I could put in my, um, in my mug. I've gotten really into the uh, quenchers, or I guess at, at Starbucks they call them refreshers, and at um, another coffee shop here in town, I don't know if you guys, if this is a national chain, but we have scooters here uh, Scooter's Coffee, and they have quenchers that they serve with coconut milk. 
Uh, it's an iced drink, and that has become a favorite of mine. And now that I talk about it out loud, I might have to go to Scooters after this live. <laughs> All right, so I have the... I have the little handles here, and as I mentioned when I talked about this set, we have handles that go in both directions. So you don't have to flip it over if you want your handle to vary like it does on my card. You just decide which handle position you want and then um, use that die cut piece. So I also wanna show you this up close. So I know sometimes it's hard to determine exactly where to adhere something like this. So we created a little tiny, gosh, can I get it in the screen here for you? See that little tiny mark on the handle, on both sides of the handle? So that's where you're going to adhere this part behind the cup. So I'm just gonna put a dot of glue on each of these little ends and then the, the cup or the handle will be in the perfect position if you line it up right on these two um, impress lines. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna just, again, just squirt that little drop of glue on each end of my cup. And then if I put that handle down and we'll just place this over the top, and that'll give me a little bit of time to wiggle it into place, making sure that that etched mark is just slightly covered up by the cup. So there's what that looks like. I know sometimes I've gotten die sets before where there doesn't seem like there was space built in to actually adhere it behind something. So that was kind of the idea when we did this was that I wanted to have a specific spot to adhere the handle to the cup so that you know that it looks like it was designed to look. And you're not guessing how far in does the handle go and um, that kind of thing. So let's just go ahead and do the rest of these. So now I'm curious, I guess I haven't been looking at watching comments because I'm paying attention to how I'm um, adhering these, but I want to know if anybody else, do you guys have scooters in your neck of the woods or is that a, a Midwest or even just an Iowa um, coffee shop? I know there's caribou coffee is big up in Minnesota. Um, I have forgotten now. It's been a long time since I've lived in California. Obviously, Starbucks is everywhere. I, uh, we, I'm not sure how this happened, but Charlie, our daughter, loves coffee. She's 10, so of course she loves the coffee that's like, has the whipped cream on top and isn't really much coffee. <laughs> it's probably mostly, mostly sugar. Um, but she loves Starbucks. So this year she's been asking for Starbucks gift cards and Starbucks cups. She loves those fun, big straw cups that they sell. So I've got to go, I've got to make it to Starbucks and, uh, get one of her last gifts that's still on my list for the cup that she wants. Don't worry. She doesn't watch my live videos. So she will never know. Don't tell her. Lolly, no scooters, but you do have refreshers with coconut milk. I love it. The coconut milk just makes it a little bit creamier without adding a ton of calories, and it's not dairy. Dairy is bad for me. I'm not dairy free, but I do try to stay away from it when I can. All right, so there are our six cups. Let's go ahead and lay them out on the piece of cardstock. This is a mini slim card base here. So we're gonna start with purple at the bottom 
and kind of stack them as if they're stacked up, ready to go in the dishwasher. Or just stacked up cutely. You might have to push them down a little bit farther into the cup so that we make sure we've got room at the top. This one's got to go down. Takes a little bit of finagling to make sure I get the right spacing with enough space at the top to put our little stamp of steam. I'm going to straighten out that top cup there. Okay, feeling pretty good about this. Once I've got that in place, actually I think I want to push it a little bit farther down here. Give us a little bit more room at the top there. This is one of those activities that needs silence. <laughs> I can't talk and do it at the same time. Okay, so I've got my cups and I'm gonna take my removable labeling tape now and pull off a, a piece of that. And then I'm gonna use that to pick up my mugs off of this piece. And for now, we're just gonna set that, we're just gonna set that piece off to the side. Eventually, we're going to put some foam tape on the back of here and adhere it back to this piece. But first, I want to add a little bit more interest here. So I'm going to take my uh, diagonal stitch mini slim stacklets to create the uh, border around the outside. I'm go ahead and put that through the machine. And this doesn't actually cut any of the cardstock off. It just creates a kind of a pierced design that helps to add texture and it kind of draws your eye into the center of the card where the focal image is while filling some of that excess white space on the outside. Okay, so we've done that. While we've got our um, die cut machine out, I'm gonna take just off to the side here and stamp out the sentiment from this set. So this is mix and match for her. So we have lots of different words to describe females in our lives. Grandma, friend, sister, mom, girl. Um, I'm going to use friend. And I'm going to live on the edge again today and just do this with my acrylic block. I'm going to line it up over the, the grid lines here. And then use a little bit of Versifying Claire. When I want a perfectly stamped clear stamp on the first try, I use my Versifying Claire. So we'll stamp friend. And then let's do friend, you are amazing. I did friend, let's celebrate you on the other one. So when I remake two of them with the live video. I like to do a little bit different sentiment. So I have a couple of options. Okay, friend, you are amazing. And then I'm going to use, so when we designed these sentiment sets, we Kind of designed them with this die set in mind. This is our modern sentiment um, labels is what we call these. I had to come up with that word, modern sentiment labels. And you can see this one fits nicely inside here. So I'll pull this back in, tape it down and send it through to cut out that sentiment. Lori 
Mary, I'm just seeing your comment that you've got scooters down by you. Have you tried the quenchers? Two within a mile of your house. That would be dangerous for me. They are, the one here is very close to work, but I don't have any close to my house. So that's probably a good thing. Okay, before we do this part, let's go ahead and just kind of position this on here. I'm gonna pull off the uh, steam image from the panel here with the little heart on it. And I'm going to stamp that with mocha ink. And I'm kind of just positioning this that's about where my cup is going to land, just so that I can visualize where to stamp my um, where to stamp my steam once I get it out of the way here. So right about up here. And then when that goes over the top, it'll look something like that. All right, then we have one more little spot at the bottom here. I'm gonna need my Paper trimmer, where did I put that? Hold please. Okay. I needed to cut off a little strip of this toffee cardstock here for the bottom of my, this is where my cups are going to sit on this little they needed something to ground them. So when I create projects, I don't like to just have little, um, whether it's a critter or a cup or whatever it is, it needs some kind of grounding. And to kind of explain that a little bit better, let me show you some of the ways that the design team has done grounding. Um, you can see here on this one from, from Susan. So her grounding is just green blended across the bottom. Then we have Jill. We've got these cute little critters. They have a little bit of ground that they're standing on that she just stitched across there. Then we have another one from Susan. Here she created grounding in her scene by just, again, blending the gray across the bottom and using a stencil to create the kind of brick wall in the background. So when you think about images with a bottom to them, whether it's feet or it's a cup or something like that. Think about grounding them so they're not just floating um, in the space of your card. So again, the way I'm going to do that is with this strip of cardstock. I'm actually going to add a little bit of dimension by blending it with toffee ink across the top here to give it a little bit of a little bit more dimension. up my blended ink a little bit. I love being able to do everything on this one surface. It's been awesome. I have enjoyed crafting on it and I hope those of you as you're getting your glass board um, that you really enjoy this surface as well. I know we've had lots of questions about when are the glass boards coming back again and I will have an answer. I mean the answer right now is they will be available again. Um, and as to when, I can tell you it will be next year. So in 2024, hopefully early on, um, we can either offer some of the excess that we have from our pre-order or we can open up a new pre-order if there's a lot more interest than what we have left. So uh, do, don't worry, they will be uh, back eventually. Okay, so, I was just gonna trim this off with scissors, but I can't happen to find the scissors nearby, so I'm going to just do it with the paper trimmer here. All right. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. 
so that is glued down to the bottom. Now I think we're just ready for our cups. Here's my little piece of tape that's holding all of those cups together. And I'm actually going to, I'm gonna rip this piece so that I can see some of the cups. Um, it was a little bit hard to see them through the, through having the tape cover all of them up. So now I can at least see some of them. And I'm going to put a little bit of foam tape on. Well, now I really do need scissors. All right. I got them. Oh, good. <laughs> Looks like we have 20 pairs over here. I know. Of course. <laughs> 20 over there and none over and here. <laughs> All right. Then we'll just put these down right in the center so our steam is showing in the top. And then we'll peel that back. And I can place my friend, you are amazing, kind of toward the bottom. I still want to be able to see all the colors of the cups, so I'm going to position it between the purple and the blue color. And then last, I have one of our top fold mini slim card bases in toffee. If you create mini slims, we do offer pre-cut card bases on our website and especially the top fold, that is gonna be one that is gonna be difficult to cut yourself um, because we don't sell 12 by 12 paper, but the measurement of this full length is 12 inches. So um, especially if you like the top fold ones, I would recommend grabbing those because you're not going to be able to get them in TE colors um, since we don't have cardstock in 12 by 12 for you to cut them yourself. We'll go ahead and put a little bit more thin foam down the back of this panel. So I used thin foam to do the coffee cups and one more round of thin foam then is going to get me dimension about as high as kind of a regular foam tape which is a 1 16th inch dimension. All right, almost. All right, there we go. Hooray, we have two of them now. On this one, I did add a couple of hearts to the cups. Again, you could do that. So many different ways you can embellish these if you want to um, with other, um, other different patterns, embossing on the cups, adding little hearts or um, elements to dress them up a little bit. So let's get back here, say farewell for today. All right, thank you guys for tuning in for our newest release. This, I did not mention earlier, but this is our last new product release for 2023. As I mentioned, we are gearing up for a big Valentine's Day release as soon as we hit the new year. So don't worry, there will be more goodies coming, um, but we wanna give everyone, including our own staff, time to enjoy the holidays with their friends and family and want you guys to do the same. So we will still be here. Don't worry, we will be having live videos. 
Uh, Thursday at 10 a.m. I know Susan and Heather switched something recently, so I can't remember who is up on Thursday. Uh, but you will see either Heather or Susan Thursday at 10 a.m. And then I'll be back Friday for our Advent Calendar Live at 10 o'clock Friday. And then we will be here Tuesday and Thursday, even when there are no new releases. I'll have uh, just some different ideas and inspiration to share with all of you. This is kind of the time that I enjoy just grabbing something because I feel inspired by it or hey, I needed this and maybe you need the same thing. So you'll be seeing a little bit of um, a random inspiration over the rest of the year as we get to craft and, and use products for whatever we need in the moment, whether it's a quick gift or a thank you card, you're gonna be seeing some of that coming up for the rest of the year. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks again for